Hey guys, it's me Andrew, and I'm back with another episode of Yuzuko. Today we're looking at another problem, but it's one of our old ones, and I've developed a new solution because um, I found out my old one from our last video had a lot of holes, and um, I've just improved it a lot, and it's increased the running speed by a lot. So let's get into it. Okay, so last time, um, if you if you um don't know what this problem is, basically I'll put it, the link of the video in, in my description. Um, there's a pretty slow solution, but it works in that video. So today we're developing a new solution. Um, well, I already developed it. I mean, so um, I found a lot of holes in the last one, and I'll explain them over here. So one of them is that we don't actually need to loop through, um, the data, which is actually a two D array. Um, in this case, if you see over here. We don't actually have to loop through in the entire thing um, in the speed of n squared or the n squared times. As it is a combination, so we don't actually need to loop through every single one. It's a combination, basically means that um, no two combinations are the same, so we only need to go through a set amount of times. Well, you may be asking, so why is programming speed so um, important? Like, why do you, why is it important to have fast code? Well, um, according to use code, they actually sometimes reject slow code, like... Um, they have a certain running speed that you need to hit for certain divisions such as bronze, gold, and silver. And if you don't hit that time speed, they're actually going to reject your solution. And you may need to rethink your thought process and completely restart your coding. Well, if you develop fast solutions and you learn how to optimize them, you can actually save old code and develop on it. And therefore, it saves a lot of time when you're in contests and you only have like four hours so and the time is tight. So, let's take a look at our new improved solution. Let's go back to the holes. And if you see here, um, back in our old code, um, so I've prepared a split screen. So, this is my old solution. Um, this is my new one, which is, which is faster. Um, the reading and the input is still pretty much the same. That's pretty self-explanatory. But um, for the looping through the data and processing it, um, you can see that we have two for loops that run through it um, n squared times. Since we're looping from n, and then we're looping through n again in each of those n times. So over here, you can see that instead of j starting from 0, we can see that it starts from i plus 1. Well, why is that? Well, if you look, go back to our slides, we actually don't need a loop through um, n squared times since it's a combination. So j actually can um, never is actually going to be equal to i. So we actually just need to um, go over here. We actually just need a, a set at i plus 1. So we can just compare dynamically instead of having j starting from zero, then we have to compare it and all that stuff. All right. So the next problem that we have is that we actually don't need to check whether cal one is equal to cal two, as in combinations, no two combinations are the same. Well, if we go back to our code here, we actually in the, our old code we check whether cal one is equal to cal two. So cal one, cal two are basically just numbers within our um, re read and data set. For example. Uh, oops, if we go back to, uh, let's see, if we go back to um, here, we can see that this is the data that we read in. So, cal1 would be, for example, 4, and cal2 would be, for example, 1. Now, if we go back to our um, slide here, we can see that um, for a combination of 4, 1, 2, 3, or i.e. the first one, or all the IDs of the cows, you can see that we generate combinations through here, and no two combinations are the same. So in that case, we actually don't need to check whether... Um, cal one is equal to cal two, and we can just um, go go ahead and process it all the way without um, adding even adding this if statement. So as you can see here in this code, the if statement is completely gone, but nothing else has changed. And finally, um, if both index one and two aren't zero, we break as that's already a valid pair. So what they mean by that is that um, if you go back to our um, sample input here we can see that um, if index 1 and index 2 so index 1 is basically the index of cal 1 for example 4 and cal 2 um, for example 1 now, the index is um, if they aren't 0 then we break and that's a valid pair so in this case we don't actually need to check whether um, they're both 0 or else they're the same one and that's not valid at all we can't really compare a cow with a ca another cow but it's like the same ID so if we go back to our code we can see that um, over here we um, check whether cal1 is um, less than cal2. Um, sorry. So in this code, in our faster code, we actually just, if index 1 is not equal to 0 and index 2 is not equal to 0, we actually break, as that already counts as a valid pair. And then we go ahead and add a pair here, like so. 
And I also changed a bunch of minor stuff. Here, I'll just um, just glide through the code real quick so you have a chance to copy it. So this the input is pretty much the same. If you want to pause the video, you can. Right here. Right here. Right here. All right. So now that we have our code, and I've said it can be fast, now we actually can show that it's actually faster. So I've implemented a timing um, method to actually time how um, fast my code is through um, this um, thing called system.nanotime. So basically, it just times my code in nanoseconds. So if we just try running this based off our test data, um, if you open this up right over here, um, the test data is basically the first one they have. And if we just both run that, just got to put this right here. So if we just want to try running this and try running this one, try running this one. All right. So actually, I think that the output is over here. Okay, I get it. So if we try running our slow code or the one we had last time, we see we see that we get a nanosecond count of ten thousand nine hundred. That's okay. Um, nanoseconds are very small, and it's so small that they can barely see that we actually have any milliseconds. Um, let's try the um, new one. And you can see that we get a significantly um, sl um, faster time of 47, 4,700 milliseconds. Well, you may think that, oh, this is just a small set of data, so it probably just varies a lot. Well, I've actually um, tested them all, and I created a chart here on my slides. And you can see that... Um, through all, all the test cases, i.e. Um, the ones that Usico gives you, um, if you just go back here uh, and you uh, go over here. So Usico actually gives you the, um, the test data for each of the problems. And if you look at here, um, if you just press this, they, you download um, a set of 10 data sets. And all of them are basically just test data for your um, basically input and output for your problem. And Basically, if you just try running them and you plug them in through here, you can see that all of them, they get a specific speed. And I've recorded all the specific speeds in this chart. And you can see that um, the time before is significantly higher than the time after, especially when we get into these big um, test data over here. So, um, therefore, I can deduce that pretty much my new code is significantly faster than my old one. And therefore, um, if it's in higher divisions, then you would probably pass it, but your old code would probably not. So, yeah, that was how to optimize one of um, your code. Um, basically, you just got to look for holes in it, especially when you're going through looping. You got to count um, how, why you're looping, how, how many times you're looping. You also got to look at your if statements. You, you want to say, hey, why am I doing this? Why am I doing that? So you got to make sure that your if statements are up to par. And finally, um, if there's something that you realize that um, it can be implemented to increase speed, but it's not actually there, you can always add your if statement, um, if statement there. Um, you can see over here. Oops. You see over here that I actually added this if statement. And it says if index 1 is not equal to index 2, I mean not equal to 0, and index 2 is the same, then we actually break. But that's a, actually a valid pair. You can add stuff like that. So thank you guys for watching. That was a faster solution for um, this problem. Um, I hope you can uh, use the knowledge that we uh, found in this problem to tie into other problems. Uh, thank you for watching. Please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.